Live from New York, it's theCUBE. Covering AWS Global Summit 2019. Brought to you by Amazon Web Services. Welcome back here in New York City for the AWS Summit. I'm Stu Miniman, my co-host is Corey Quinn, and I'm happy to welcome two guests from NetApp. Uh, first, my right, welcome back to the program from another cloud show earlier this year, <laughs> Yonzi Stephenson, who's the CCO and Vice President for Cloud Services. And to his right, while it's a first time on the program, uh, I actually was on one of his earlier podcasts, Jeff Dickey, uh, who's joined NetApp as the uh, yeah, chief technologist uh, inside uh, that same cloud and data services group. Uh, Jeff, welcome, and Yonzi, welcome back. Thank you, Stuart. Thank you. Okay, so uh, Yonzi, let, let's start with you. So, you know, we watched, you know, the, the cloud and data services, you know, fr from my words, it's like almost, I, I want a new brand. It's like, this is not the, you know, on tap everywhere, yeah. you know, best NFS, you know, the number one thing there, it's, you know, it's about multi-cloud, it's about getting the value out of my data, that transformation we've seen overall in what was known as the storage industry. Yeah. Uh, there are a lot of new people, a lot of new products, and you know, it's the, you know, the and, as I think uh, there was one NetApp term, is all of the history and the things you can trust, but a lot of new things. So g g give us the updates on what's exciting in your world. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, of course, we are still, still relying on that uh, old trusted uh, on top and waffle storage operating system in the back end, but we have abstracted a lot of that into a more automation, uh, or you, you're consuming it in a more auto, uh, autonomous way. We are actually uh, taking all the, the, the storage knobs that the, sto the traditional storage admin is really used to uh, you know, tweaking and all of that, that's all done and managed by us. It's fully as a service, and we are more focused on the data management capabilities of ONTAP than the actual storage system or the performance of that storage operating system. Uh, I mean, we are in a very unique position as NetApp. I mean, we have a very strong uh, uh, foothold in the enterprise, and uh, now we have integrated services with all the public clouds. I mean, fully native integrated services either going through their own console or, or, or and their own uh, their own APIs or with our own UI. So the data management capabilities that we are actually bringing to the table is you can seamlessly migrate from the core uh, to the edge and to the cloud, depending on where you want your data to reside. So our goal is actually to do something very similar as Kubernetes has done to the application layer. They have made it completely uh, mobile. There is no longer that VM format issues that we had in the old days. It's basically just a kernel module. I can move it wherever on top of a hypervisor of choice or a public cloud of choice. But data has always been sort of uh, left behind on some proprietary box sitting there. But NetApp, like I said, NetApp is in this very unique position of being able to move, migrate, replicate, and, and split the data according to your strategy, whether it's on-premise or the public cloud. All right, Jeff, would love to give you your viewpoint is what you're hearing from customers. I, I've, I've known you for many years. <laughs> Talk about you know, that, that journey towards cloud and what is cloud and how does it fit into their customer environment. So you know, give, give us what, what brought you into NetApp and uh, you know, some of the conversations you're having as, uh, uh, as you've been you know, sure. digging in with the NetApp team. Well, well the, the coming to NetApp is actually a long story. You know, I've, I've known the Green Cloud folks for a long time. Uh, I think was the first kind of U.S. partner of theirs, and um, have been a big fan of their uh, first their their cloud and then their their software. Um, so I was really excited when the the NetApp acquisition happened. And you know, for for about a year, I was learning like the stuff they were working on, and that was blowing my mind. Uh, and again, I've worked with almost every storage company out there, so it was exciting to like the, the future of what was happening. Um, and then after the, the acquisition of StackPoint, which I was currently working with, um, you know, so it's like NetApp kind of took my two favorite companies in a short time, so I said, hey, uh, I want to be working on, you guys, you guys are doing the coolest stuff that, that I've seen right now, and the roadmap is blowing my mind. I want to, I want to join, so uh, it's, been, it's been a great time here. Um, I think what's, what's most unique, what I've found is, the, the typical, when you're doing uh, cloud consulting, you go after the low hanging fruit. It's it's very simple strategy. You know, if you were to go to a customer and say, let's take your highest demanding, most revenue generating systems, and we're going to migrate those to AWS first. 
well, they're going to look at the $10 million contract and you know, the two-year engagement and say, no, we're not going to do that. You go for the, the low-hanging fruit. But because of the products that, that have come out and what we're doing in the public clouds, we're, you know, for the first time we have NFS, you know, like basically SLA performant uh, file system in the cloud that can handle the, the biggest, baddest on-prem apps. So now that we're able to do that, so what customers are doing, they are now, we're, we're taking those, those big ones and it's accelerating the whole journey to cloud. Because instead of creating more of a chasm between your public cloud infrastructure and your on-prem, because a lot of people, you know, but face it, if you've got a $50 million budget, you're putting it mostly into cloud. And some of your on-prem, which again is still generating a lot of revenue, is not getting the love it needs and it's not becoming cloud either and you have this kind of chasm. So I think it's great that you know, with, with the customers we're working with, they're, they're very excited to be moving what they thought they were never going to be able to move yeah. because it just wasn't there. And now they have native connections to all their, the services they love, like, like you know, here at AWS. So it's just great because, you know, yes, they're consolidating their data and they're having less silos, but in, that's exciting. But what excites me most is what are they going to do next and after that, what are they going to do next with that? Like as, as they learn how to use their data and connect more to cloud services and our cloud services and, and the public cloud services, they're going to be able to do way more than they ever thought they would. Something that I think would resonate with a number of folks has been that, I mean, I, I go a little bit back, I'm a little older than I look, although I wear it super well. And I, I cut my teeth on Waffle and working with Snap Mirror and doing all kinds of interesting things with that. It's easy to glance, walk around the expo hall and glance at it and figure, huh, I see there's a NetApp booth. You must still be trying to convince AWS to let you shove a filer into US East One. It, that's not really what your company does anymore in the traditional sense, but I think a lot of people may have lost that message. From a cloud perspective, Absolutely. what is NetApp doing in 2019? So, I mean, uh, we, we are really, really uh, software focused. So, I mean, we are doing a lot of work. We are containerizing that uh, Waffle operating system. We are really excited about uh, launching that as alpha today. That basically means, uh, lo launching it in alpha in October, uh, that basically means that you could get all the on top data management goodies on top of any storage operating system, on top, top of any physical or, or persistent disks in any of these different public clouds. EPS volumes, Google PDs, or Azure. It's, uh, it's, uh, it's, uh, we wanted to make it, make, make, make it so anybody can actually deploy on top. We've already, always had that story with on top select, but being able to containerize it, I don't know if uh, we can actually, uh, so we can actually reap the benefits of Kubernetes when it comes to high availability, replication, uh, uh, auto-scaling and self-healing capabilities to make it a much more robust scale-out as well as scale-up solution. So that's, uh, that's truly our focus. And our focus for 2019 is of course, we've, we've been really, really busy with our heads down coding for a long, long time. Or for a long time. Long, very short time in NetApp terms, but uh, in cloud terms, very, very long. Uh, like uh, for the last 18 months, but now we're really sort of integrating our entire portfolio where we have uh, monitoring, deep analytics, compliancy, Kubernetes, uh, uh, storage providers, schedulers. Uh, so everything is sort of uh, gelling together now. Yeah. So, you know, I, I, I think back a couple of years ago, if you talk to Amazon, uh, the answer to everything was move everything to the public cloud. Yeah, yeah. Um, today, uh, Amazon at least admitted that hybrid cloud is a thing. Yeah, they won't yeah. say hybrid necessarily, but you know, with the uh, outposts. Of outposts and what they're part doing with their partnership with, uh, with VMware and the like, they're doing that. Um, when I look at customers, most of them have multi-cloud. Now yeah. when we say multi-cloud, it means they have lots of clouds and whether or not yeah. they're tied together, they're not doing that. And while Amazon won't admit to it and isn't looking to manage in that environment, they're playing in that because Absolutely. if I have lots of clouds, one of them is likely AWS. Yep. NetApp sits at the intersection of a lot of this. You yeah. have your you know, a huge install base inside the data center, you're working very much with Amazon and the other cloud providers. So I, what I'm hoping to get from you is your, your insight on customers. You know, where are they today? What are they struggling with in that hybrid or multi-cloud world and where do you see things maturing uh, as, as we go the next couple of years? Well, I mean, the, the fact of the matter is 83% of all workloads still reside on-premise. 
whether it's a whether it stays like that or doesn't. I mean, AWS is doing Outbox, Google is doing Anthos, Azure is doing Azure Stack, and uh, the good thing is we are actually playing with all of them. We are collaborating on all these different projects, both on the storage layer as well as on these like application lifecycle management. For, from our point of uh, from our point of view. It is really important that we start tying all the infrastructure-related uh, stuff into the application layer. So you're actually managing everything from that layer and down. So for a developer like me, it's actually really simple to actually do all the tasks and completely manage my own solution. Of course I need operations to be managing the infrastructure, but I should be oblivious to it. As a, as a developer, and and uh, and uh, what, what we are actually seeing customers doing now, more and more, and it's actually really refreshing coming here to New York and meeting all these financial companies. They have always been like probably the the slowest movers to the public cloud because of compliance reasons and other stuff, but they are actually really adopting it. They have segmented up their workloads and and really know what teams are allowed to provision and are supposed to be running in the public cloud in order to tap into the innovation that's happening there, and what teams are only allowed to work on on-premise environments. So you're so, I mean, it, it sort of relates into the true cloud concept. The true cloud concept being everything is a cloud, and there is no lock-in, have the freedom of choice where to provision, where to uh, 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 spin up your uh, workloads. So we're seeing that more and more from our customers. Would you agree? Yeah, yeah so, totally agree. J yeah, uh, Jeff, uh, you know, wonder if you could give a little bit more, as you said, you know, NetApp's done quite a few acquisitions uh, in, the, in the last couple of years. What sort of things should people be, you know, thinking about NetApp uh, that they might not have, uh, you know, a couple of years ago? Well, you know, I'll, I'll, tell, I'll tell a quick story. My first day as a NetApp employee was at um, KubeCon in Seattle. And I remember, you know, I was wearing the NetApp badge and I had a, a, a friend that I was, I was a partner with and he looks at my badge and says, NetApp? He's like, like the, the, the box in the closet people? Mm. And I'm just like, well, I mean, not anymore, you know? And it's, it, that's, I think that's the biggest, that, that, biggest thing. You mean network appliance? Network from, yeah. you know, yeah. just yeah. those no. of us that have known NetApp long enough? Yeah. No, <laughs> it's, uh, yeah, it's now uh, internet application, right? Now it's uh, a little bit different. So um, I, I think the, the big thing is, you know, you know, it's not just storage. Right. I mean, storage is a key component and it's very important but that's, that's not the only thing. And, and I think on the, the cloud side, it's, it's very important because I don't, you know, we're still maintaining this relationship with, with, with our storage appliances and, and, and everything, but um, we have more, more buyers now. So we can go across the company and say, well, what, you know, what are you doing? Like, are you an SRE? Are you a developer lead? Are you, know, are you a VP of operations? Like, we, we have all these products that, that work for them, Yet in the end, it's a single vision to the you know, deep insights of, of everything they're doing with us. Yeah, so just a quick follow up on that. So you know, I think when NetApp bought a, a Kubernetes company, it was like, okay, I'm trying to understand how that fits. When I look at NetApp's biggest partners, I think you know, VMware, Cisco, yeah. Red Hat, all going heavily after software solutions, including yep. the Kubernetes piece. So, yep. you know, how does NetApp do differently? Because well, you still have strong partnerships yeah, there. Yeah, I think, I think we're, we're in a strong place because you know, now we're doing two things. We're bringing the apps to the data and the data to the apps. Yeah. So it's, you know, where, where do you want to be? There's, there's the, the right place for your app. There's, there's a lot of choice now, and now we have, uh, you know, now you can choose. Where is this going to live best? Where is this going to operate? Where is this going to you know, serve our customers best? What's going to be the, the most cost effective? Um, you know, being able to deploy and manage and I mean, just, you know, type in a couple characters and, and, and your entire uh, production Kubernetes deployment is backed up anywhere you want. Like, there's just, you know, um, you know, the apps are nothing without data, the data is nothing without the app, right? So you know, it's bringing those two together. I think it's very important to kind of get, get out there. That's, you know, my job is getting that out uh, that you know, it's not, storage silos, this is about your apps. What are you doing with it? What do you, what do you, where do you want your apps? And what is that data, how's the data helping your apps grow and you know, we're helping people move forward and innovate faster with yeah. these products? I mean, both, uh, both companies, my company Green Cloud uh, and uh, Stackpoint, I mean, we were really, really early adopters of Kubernetes. And uh, we've always taken a very, both companies, very application-centric point of view on Kubernetes 
well, most everybody else have taken a very infrastructure-centric approach. We were two startup companies, just developers, and we always sort of felt like, because it's a very common misunderstanding that Kubernetes was actually built for developers. It wasn't, it was, it is an infrastructure play, built and developed by the Google SREs to run code. So everything that we were adding on top of it and beneath it, it ties it all together. So I mean, for a developer working on our Kubernetes offerings, he's basically working in his own element. He's just doing commits and magic happens in the, in, in the background. It, uh, it, we tie, we have, we tie uh, the development branch to a specific uh, node pool. We tie the staging branch to another one. And, and the production environment, once you commit that, then it actually goes through like an SRE process where they are basically the gatekeepers, where they actually either allow or, or say, hey, we found a bug or we are not able to deploy this according to our standards. So tying it all together, all the way from the storage layer, all the way up to the application layer is what we are all about. And, that, and uh, I, I got the same question when, uh, when we were acquired and we had, when we were GreenCloud, we were in a really, really good situation where we had term sheets from three different companies. I'm not allowed to say which ones, but everybody, once I sold it to NetApp, they were like, why NetApp? But if you go to KubeCon, and you're always there, there is a very uh, uh, live matrix on what the biggest problems are with Kubernetes. And persistent volume claims and storage and, and data management hasn't been solved yet. Yeah. And that's where we believe that we have uh, a unique way of uh, offering those data management capabilities all the way up the stack. All right, well, Yonzi and, and Jeff, thank you so much for giving us the update there. Absolutely, uh, Corey Quinn, I'm Stu Miniman. We'll be at KubeCon uh, later this year in yeah. San Diego. We're at Amazon reInvent. Always go to thecube.net to see all the shows that we're at, as well as you know, hit the search and you, know, you can see the thousands of videos. Always, no registration to be able to check that out. So uh, check all out all, all the interviews, and as always, thanks for watching theCUBE.